Well, greetings everybody, and on today's episode, we're going to be ranking my top 10 James Bond titles, just the titles. So let me go into a bit more detail about this right after the titles here. I think it's a very fair and very honest opinion here, and I think I speak for a lot of us Bond fans out there, that one of the things we get really excited about the most when a new James Bond film comes out is the fact that we're going to get the title of it. We get so excited to hear what the title is for the next James Bond film, because let's be fair, some of the best titles for films have been some of the James Bond ones. If you look back through the whole history of James Bond novels and James Bond films, James Bond video games even and all, they have some of the most amazing film titles. And I think they're really sort of great titles and capsize what a great title could be. So in this video, I wanted to break down what in my opinion are the top 10 James Bond titles. So before we get further into this seven, can I ask already if you have do give us a like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel. I really much gratefully appreciate it. And also, if you can't watch this episode on YouTube and you need to potentially listen to it instead in the car, or in the gym, or at work as a nice background audio, you can listen to this. You might be already, and thank you if you are, on the Bond Geek podcast, available on Spotify, available on Amazon Music, and also available on YouTube Music as well. We're trying to get it in all the others as well, so bear with me on that one. So that's just that all out the way. The next thing I just want to mention here is we are ranking just the James Bond titles. We're not connecting them to something that happens in the movie. We're looking at the titles as their individual words or sentences that is what we're looking at here. Now, for me, a great title evokes many things. And again, I'm basing this, I think, on the precedent that Ian Fleming set up with his titles. Ian Fleming, I would think, was a master at creating titles. And for me, his titles always boil down to a couple of things. They're either very mysterious and very elusive. They're also very harkening to the world of espionage. They can be dangerous. They can be bold. They can be a combination of many multiple things put together. So for me, I am ranking these in what I think are the best, if you will, James Bond titles. And can I just say right off the bat here and now, some of them, in my opinion, in the top 10 aren't actually a Fleming original. I think some of the new created titles for the movies are some of the best as well. So without that being said, let's get into my ranking right now. Skyfall reaches the bottom part of my top 10 tier list, but again, it is still in the top 10. And what I love about Skyfall as a title, it invokes so much mystery, but also so much danger. Just take the title, Skyfall. Obviously, the sky is falling, sense of danger, but also a real sort of mystery. What does that title mean? What does just the word Skyfall mean? So many different ideas. Does it reference the danger that's coming or something else? For me, that really sums up a really great James Bond title. Mystery and danger at the same time with so much elegance. So for me, a great way to start off this list. Tomorrow Never Dies gets the number nine spot on my list because for me, it's such an ingenious title. It really flows off the tip of your tongue. I think the word die is used a lot in Bond titles, but this is one title that really uses it so effectively. And just the phrase, tomorrow never dies, has so much mystery and again, so much danger because of the word die. What does it mean? Again, a bit like Skyfall, what is this implying? What could be behind that? What do you mean by tomorrow? Why is the danger with die? Again, another great title and I think one of the actual best of all Bond titles. Die Another Day is, in my opinion, one of the best titles of all time, period, when it comes to the name of something. I think Die Another Day is absolutely a fantastic title. It flows, it has a real elegance to it. Again, the word die is used here so really well. And it's also one, I think, a great sort of espionage -esque title. I think it really lends itself to the world of espionage, of the idea of die another day. Really emphasizing the thing about a spy having to just go and die another day. He's got to do what he's got to do right now. 
It's also very mysterious. It's also just very elegant. Again, I think takes what is great about the espionage world and the idea of what a James Bond title is and just presents it right there. So yeah, definitely a big one for me. The most recent title of the James Bond film, No Time to Die, I think is absolutely a brilliant capitalization of the James Bond character in a title. Now again, we're taking this out of what happens in the movie here, but the phrase, no time to die, a real meaning of adrenaline, of the sense of keep on going, I have no time for this, I've got to keep going, I've got to save the world, that no time adds a bit of danger to this to die as well adds on the extra danger this is a brilliant capsulation of that idea of a bond title being dangerous for me no time to die definitely encapsulates that i think it's another really great title to the pantheon here a view to a kill is again very similar to my feelings of the no time to die title to this one the reason i put this one a bit higher is i think it has a bit more of an espionage twist to it First, let's just take the first bit, a view, meaning a scope, a view, scouting someone, spying on someone, and then to a kill, meaning an end, a danger point here, a view to a kill. It has mystique, it has style, it has danger, it flows, it's intriguing, it's mystical, in the sense of real mystery-esque. I, I love this title so much. I think it's one of Fleming's great ones. I know the original title is From A View To A Kill, but dropping the from here works so well, and it is definitely one of Ian Fleming's greatest titles I think he ever created. A lot of people I imagine will put Spy Who Loved Me a lot higher on their top 10 list than what I've done here, which is Bang in the Middle of Number 5. But I think this is where it belongs, and it is a superb title. Just breaking it down again, the spy, the connotations and the thoughts we have when we think about the word spy, who loved me. That really is interesting. That sets up a real sort of story itself within its own title, The Spy Who Loved Me. What a great title, because it emphasizes that this is really about the spy espionage and again, also a potential love story here. So much is going on and so much intrigued and like ideas and potential stories coming out just from this title alone. I think it's definitely worthy of being in the top five and a great entry point into the top five. The Spy Love Me, again, another classic Fleming title, one that Cubby Brock himself really loved and one I very much loved too. It really does feel and sound like James Bond. The only video game title that made my ranking list was Asian Under Fire here. And I think, again, what a superb title. Taking the things that we've talked about in previous titles and giving it a real sort of crisp precision here. Agent Under Fire. The words under fire, brilliant muse here. The word agent, again, spy, really going out to that. Under fire, danger, you all know what under fire means here. Bringing them both together, agent under fire, really great. Adds the danger, it really has that mystery about it. It slips off the tongue, it flows, it feels real James Bondian-ish. I love the title, Agent Under Fire. And again, it was a really great title, and I think one I think deserves a bit more praise and recognition. Live and Let Die is always, I think, going to be on people's top 10 rankings of Bond titles here, and I'm no different here, and I put it here as number three. For me, I've mentioned previously the word die being used in a lot of titles and to great effect, but nothing compared to how it's used in the title here. It acts like a punch when you say the whole title, Live and Let Die. It really does also, I think, explain a great lot about Bond's mindset, Live and Let Die. Yeah, that means in order to live, he has to kill. It really is basically, I live or he and he dies. It can't be both one way or the other. It's such an intriguing, beautiful title. And again, a great um, twist on the classic phrase, live and let live, now being used ironically for this way meant as well. And now probably more famously known in Live and Let Die. I think just what an amazing title. It has everything you want in it. It has suspense, it has mystery, danger. Just all so much great stuff here. I love the title, Live and Let Die. It's such a wonderful title. And one again, one of Fleming's best. From Russia Love is one of those titles for me that just says a whole story in your head without you realizing with so much depth and so much intrigue and so much of a homage to the spy world. It's just absolutely fantastic. If we just break down the first half of that title here from Russia, that really emphasis on the word Russia, 
really sparked Cold War tensions, the whole sort of spy world. When we think about Russia, we think a lot about the Cold War and the espionage war that came on with it. So it really is sort of like bang in front of you there. And then the second half, conjecting that with love, a love story happening. So basically you got the ultimate spy comment and country when you think about this world of espionage with a love story combined on it as well. What a great title. Everything there, mystery, drama, danger, real sort of tensions mounting there as well when you think about the world politically. It, From Russia Love is definitely one of just Fleming's greatest titles he ever created and I think one that just really oozes the greatness of the spy genre and James Bond in general. But for me there is one title above that that I think is even better if it was possible to some that I do think is better. The World's Not Enough For Me is the greatest James Bond title and one I think that will be very difficult to ever top. I want to just break it down here again. The idea of having Bond's own family motto, The World Is Not Enough, is such a brilliant idea for a Bond title. And again, it explains so much, not only about the spy genre, but Bond himself. If I could just break it down first on this, if you will, the Bond side of things. The world is not enough. It really shows Bond's mindset. Nothing's ever big enough. He lives life on the edge. He literally does everything to 10 and above. So the idea of the world is not enough really does show Bond's mindset and how he views the world and how he approaches things in life. And then again, if you look at it from another perspective here, the world is not enough. Meaning sort of like, is someone feeling it's not enough to rule? Is it not enough to control? What is meaning by the world is not enough? There's so much here involved, I think, within the spy mindset of villainy here in this title. It's absolutely terrific. It flows off the tongue. It's suspenseful. It's intriguing. You love saying it. It's dangerous. It's really classical at the same time. For me, the most definitive James Bond title, as far as I'm concerned, is The World's Not Enough. Hands down. Has everything you want and it sees so much more. It's just the pinnacle, I think, of what a great title actually can be. Well, everyone, that is my top 10 James Bond titles. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you as well will comment down below and tell me your favourite and your own personal ranking of your favourite James Bond titles. I'd love to hear it. I think this would be great to listen to and discuss. So that is everything from me, everyone. Don't forget, again, to like, comment and subscribe. As always, everyone, my name's Henry Stevens, and I'm the Bond Geek. Goodbye.